Hello. Today we're going to discuss the topic of the trade deficit. When nations trade with each other, there are three possible positions they can be in. One is you can sell more goods to the other country uh, than it buys from you, and this is called a trade surplus. The second is you can have balanced trade. You can sell approximately the same number of goods to that other country as you buy from that country. The third position is called a trade deficit. You sell fewer goods to the other country than it buys from you. Each one of these positions has consequences. Most nations push to have a trade surplus, to be in a situation where they sell more to other countries than they buy from those countries. The second position, the balanced trade position, results in countries uh, being about even up each other. But the trade deficit has serious consequences. We can talk about how it's affected the United States. One way of thinking about the trade deficit is that no matter is when you buy foreign goods, even though you pay for them at the asking price, something is not paid for, something is left over. And the problem is that the other country has more of your currency than you have of its currency, and that imbalance results in trying to balance the trade accounts between the two countries. Normally, that's done with debt. So even though you think of us, yourself, having paid 100% for the goods, a debt develops between the two countries, and that debt is part of the deficit. So if you look at countries that the United States owes money, you will probably discover that there is a relationship between the amount of American debt with those countries and the size of the trade deficit with those countries. This is a serious problem because what happens is countries with a surplus of dollars have to do something with them. Normally, they can take that money into, the, into a country like the United States and they can invest here. And while foreign investment may seem like a good idea, it means that a certain amount of the uh, sovereignty, a certain amount of the um, ability of that country to function becomes dependent upon decisions being made by foreign banks, foreign businesses. The United States, if it went in a, maybe a 20 or 30 year period from being the world's principal creditor nation, and that means if you looked around, everyone owed us money, to being the world's principal debtor nation. And that position is increasing because part of what we've lost in that time, and part of it has been uh, through uh, the process of international trade, is we are losing our productive capacity. The trade deficit presents a serious threat to the United States. It's had one serious advantage in the entire process of negotiating free trade. And that's been the fact that the American dollar has been the reserve currency. That's been an advantage that's aided the United States in many very special ways. Most countries, when they have to trade with another country, what they do is they have to convert uh, their currency into the foreign currency, and there's a cost for that, and then uh, they can buy the goods and services in the other country. But because the United States has been the reserve currency, it doesn't have to convert other currencies into, the, into dollars but can trade directly with dollars. As our position has softened around the world, and as our credit standing has slipped, there is constant talk of abolishing uh, the dollar status as a reserve currency. If that should happen, the United States, which is now not producing as much as it once did, and deeply committed in buying goods and services on the open market, will suddenly find the cost of everything that it acquires from foreign countries much more expensive. And at that point, there will be a nexus which will be very clear between the trade deficit and the budget and other deficits that plague the country. Hmm. The United States must restore its productivity and it must get control of the trade situation. Once the United States accepted even the most unfair of situations with other nations, largely based on the presumption that we were so rich, so powerful, so influential, 
that these things just didn't matter. But it must be clear to the American people now that these trade deficits, like the nation's budget deficit and debt, are matters for serious concern. And if they're not addressed, the future prosperity of the American people is sorely, sorely going to be challenged. In conclusion, we must do something about the trade deficit.